In 2018, Apple became a trillion dollar company. Mainstream media declared it as the first trillion dollar company ever. But that is not true. Today we have few companies that have the trillion dollar mark and they are mostly tech companies. The first trillion dollar company was created over 100 years ago and was an oil company. His founder, John D. Rockefeller, was worth over 400 billion dollars. Looking at the Forbes billionaires list, nobody comes close to Rockefeller. Today, there isn't a company with the characteristics of Rockefeller's standard oil company. The company owned 90% of the US oil market, and all that was possible because of John D. Rockefeller and his amazing story. Born in 1839 in New York, Rockefeller didn't have, let's say, a normal childhood. Born second of the six children to a mother who was a homemaker and a father who was a snake oil salesman, better said, a con artist. His dad got some nice nicknames like Big Bill and Devil Bill. Rockefeller Sr. led a double life. He had few children with a woman named Nancy Brown. Logically, you can't live long like this. You need to find a solution. He found an amazing solution. He took Nancy Brown to his house and she lived with the Rockefellers. Because the family was highly religious, they told people that Nancy is their housekeeper. Young John was disgusted by that and swore to never be like his father. He didn't like to stay at home, so he hustled the whole day, helping neighbors to raise turkey and selling candies and potatoes. Young Rockefeller's main goal was to earn $100,000, which is now more than 3 million, and to live to be 100 years old. He dropped out of high school and took one business and accounting class. That class was enough to get him a job at a local commission merchants and produce shippers, where young Rockefeller worked as an assistant bookkeeper. His pay was 50 cents per day, which is now around $15. That wasn't enough for life. After two years of working there, he asked for a raise. Rockefeller was rejected. Quit and started his own company. Rockefeller was in an amazing position. You see, he was friendly with the customers at Hewitt and Tuttle, which gave him a good reputation in the town. He also learned to negotiate at that job. So when he opened his business, Rockefeller managed to get a $4,000 loan, which is now equal to $100,000. The company business was trading meat, hay, grain, and other agricultural products. He's done good. First year, the company had a revenue of $500,000, but not all were profits. He needed to pay business expenses, commissions, and a loan. But after all, Rockefeller earned good money in his first year. In 1859, the first American oil rig has been discovered. That began the Pennsylvania oil rush. Rockefeller jumped on the rush and realized that it's better to be in the refinery business than the digging business. He saw that a lot of people lost everything because they were digging in the wrong places. So he would just buy oil and refine it. Not only that, he didn't want to buy barrels to store the oil. He would buy forests and make his workers cut trees so that he could produce his own barrels. Back then, oil wasn't valuable as it is today. Cars weren't a thing, so oil was processed to kerosene, which people used in lamps, and the industry wasn't focused on the Middle East, but rather in the US. Rockefeller did the business differently. He hired a lot of chemists who sped up and improved the refining process, and also found new ways of using byproducts. In 1865, the refinery was worth over $70,000, which is now more than $1 million. But that's not all. In the same year, there were 26 refineries. In the next five years, John D. Rockefeller acquired 22 of them. The way he acquired them was unique at that time. Rockefeller would convince competitors to sell their companies to him by simply inviting them over and sitting them down with a book of his finances. Then Rockefeller would leave the room. In the case the competitors refused to sell, Rockefeller would sell his oil for a much cheaper price so that the customers would come to him. Sometimes Rockefeller sold oil over 70% cheaper. He could operate like that because he could run with a loss much longer than his competitors could. Also, he would offer them positions in his own company, so he got the best minds in the industry under his wing. Rockefeller's standard oil became so big that the previous competitors ran the business with him. In 1870, he would make 90% of US sales oil production, owned over 15,000 oil whales, 4,000 miles of pipeline, and had over 100,000 employees. 2% of US GDP came from Rockefeller. With that kind of power would come people who didn't like that. 
In fact, nobody liked Rockefeller. The public didn't like Rockefeller. They thought he would own the whole world. The media portrayed him in the same way. Legislators decided to take actions to take him down. So he moved the headquarters to New Jersey and made a new company named Standard Oil Trust. But as you know, all golden ages come to an end. Tons of oil sites were found in Asia and in 1890, the Sherman Antitrust Act were things that would put an end to Standard Oil. The Sherman Antitrust Act is greatly explained by this. If you and your neighbor both sell apples, the two of you can't get together and decide that you're both going to charge the same price for an apple. Rockefeller retired in 1897 and left the company to his son to run. 1911 was the end of Standard Oil. They were found guilty for monopoly by the Supreme Court and got split it to 34 separate companies. Rockefeller got shares in all those companies, which would make him even richer. But those companies over time would merge together, and you may have heard of them. They are called ExxonMobil, Chevron, Marathon, and BP. Rockefeller spent the remaining of his life doing philanthropy. He built colleges, donated money to churches, and everywhere he went, he would give a dime to everyone. In his private life, he would always make time for family. Greeting his wife to his success, he said that without her judgment, he would be a poor man and would write her love letters. He was also a man who said, I want a nation of workers, not thinkers. Rockefeller was a symbol of corporate greed. The family went into politics and banking. Nelson Rockefeller, the grandson of John D. Rockefeller, became a vice president of the US. The family has a bad reputation, being the topic of many conspiracy theories. What if Standard Oil existed today? Well, it would be a multi-trillion dollar company. Rockefeller, without a doubt, would be the richest person on the planet. Companies learned a lot from Rockefeller, and some of them even went the Rockefeller way. For example, Amazon would, in his early days, buy out smaller online booksellers. And look what Amazon is today. Now, was Rockefeller a nice philanthropist or an evil businessman? I really want to know your opinion. Tell me in the comment. Subscribe for more business content and business stories.